We are gonna go over the cranial nerves on the real brain and I'll kind of show you both go back and forth. But we'll start with the first one, cranial nerve number one. And in all actuality, what we see on the real brain here, we see olfactory bulb and olfactory tract, but the actual olfactory nerves would come off the olfactory bulb. So if we look at this model here, we can see, um, so our olfactory tract and bulb kind of run on top and then they go through the cribriform foramina and come out here into the ethmoid sinus. And so those are our actual olfactory nerves coming off of the olfactory bulb here. So when you think about that, when you have a cold or something, your sinuses get plugged up. So that's why we can't taste when that happens is because those nerves are very much in those sinuses. Then we're gonna move on to the optic nerve. So the optic nerves here go anterior, and then the optic chiasm is in the middle, and then the optic tracts go posterior here. And you can see a little bit here, that's that infundibulum coming off, which would attach to the pituitary gland. Then we have the two oculomotor nerves. So we have sticking out here and here. And I'll show some other brains here that kind of give that a better image. So again, we have olfactory bulb tract, optic nerve, chiasm tract, and then here's our oculomotor nerve right there and oculomotor nerve right here. And then on this guy, the first three we can see are, well, actually, I think we just have one olfactory over here, bulb and tract. Here's our optic. And then you can see those oculomotor coming out in between. So right here. So we have right here, right here. So here's our cerebral peduncles and those oculomotor will always come out kind of in between those right there. So we can see them here. We also have our little mammillary bodies sticking out right there next to it as another point of reference. Then we have our two T's. So our two T's, the first T is the trochlear nerve. And we can always find the trochlear, well, if it's long enough, we will see the trochlear nerve wrap around the outside of the cerebral peduncle. So here we see one kind of wrapping around. Right there, it's kind of dark, but you can see it on my probe here. So that's the trochlear nerve. And he, here's our cerebral peduncle. So he wraps around to the front. Um, but if we can't see it, if it's stubby, sometimes it's hard to get those out in their entirety. We're just going to flip the brain around to the back. We can always find the trochlear nerve coming off. So here is our corpora quadrigemina in the back. And we can always see that trochlear nerve coming off inferior to the inferior colliculi. So my brain's upside down. So we have the two inferior colliculi and the two superior colliculi. So there's a trochlear nerve here and a trochlear nerve here. That's the one we could wrap all the way to the front. So that's where we find them. So let's look at these other brains here. So this brain, I believe they weren't long enough, but we'll come check back here. So here we can see there's one trochlear nerve coming off there and one trochlear nerve, just a little stubby guy right there. So, and we'll zoom out just so you can kind of see what that looks like all together. So here's our cerebellum and our corpora quadrigemina, and then the two trochlear nerves. And then we'll look at this last one. This last one actually has some pretty good trochlear nerves. Well, at least this side, you can see that guy wrapping totally amazing around that cerebral peduncle right there. So I'm kind of lifting it up with my probe here. Um, so that's a pretty big one. I'm not seeing that come on that side, but let's take a look. So again, we're lifting up the cerebellum, finding our corpora quadrigemina. And so here we see that trochlear nerve coming off right there, that really big, beautiful, long one that we saw wrapped to the front. And then on this side, we can see, oh, that guy's pretty long. He just was kind of stuck and bent up. So that's the other guy right there. So that's our trochlear nerve. Our trigeminal gives us a little bit of a break here. Our trigeminal nerve is pretty big. So I always feel like this looks like a fat belly. 
but the trigeminal looks like little arms coming out. So here's one on this side, and here's a nub on this side. This guy looks like he's kind of dying. And then on this brain here, so we have trigeminal, trigeminal. On this brain here, we have trigeminal, trigeminal. Um, and so those are trochlear trigeminal. So we had three O's, two T's, and then we're gonna do three right smack dab in a row. We have abducens, facial, and vestibulocochlear. And if you look, these all are coming off from the top of the pons here, and they go right in order. So medial to lateral, abducens. I'll do this side this time. So we have abducens, facial, and vestibulocochlear. And vestibulocochlear, you'll learn this next week, but we're going to split into two nerves. We're going to split into the vestibular nerve and the cochlear nerve. So if you look, you can tell there's actually two nerves there, and that's a really good indicator to know we're at the vestibulocochlear nerve. Um, they're kind of bundled together. So let's look at our next brain here. So we go abducens, facial, vestibulocochlear. Again, those two kind of double-barreled nerve there. And on this side, we have abducens, facial, and vestibulocochlear. And then on this last one, these one, this um, medulla is really coming off, <laughs> but you still have the two abducens coming down the middle. And then on this side, you have facial and then vestibulocochlear. <clears throat> and on this side, that facial nerve is kind of hiding right there. And vestibulocochlear is right there. This brain isn't quite dissected, so you see a lot of the vasculature still. That's what all those dark things are. All right, and then we're gonna move on to two more. We have the glossopharyngeal and the vagus nerves. And these are a little tricky. You have to kind of fine tune and look really hard to see these. But do you see how there's kind of a groove or indentation between this nerve and these nerves here? The one that, so both of these are actually coming off of the side of the medulla, whereas the first three we were looking at are coming off of the pons. These are coming off this side. So this first guy here is the glossopharyngeal nerve. And then this group behind him are the vagus nerve. And while we're on this side, you see there's like a couple here. These are actually pretty stinky. But if you had accessory nerves, they would come off on the side back here. I'm not seeing, I actually think that's more vasculature. So I don't think that's a nerve. So we have glossopharyngeal here and then the vagus nerves. And they look like little strips. So you can either think strippers at vagus or the strip at vagus if you want G-rated or X-rated, I guess it's up to you. But they are lots, many little strips. So let's look at the other side here. And not all of these brains have everything that we want. But if we're looking at this side here, so we can see the group right here. This is our vagus nerves together. And then you can see kind of one or two little strands coming off where they should. So just to reference, so here's our facial and here's our vestibulocochlear. And then on the side here, here's our glossopharyngeal coming off the side there. This is a vessel, so ignore him. We're just talking about these tiny little things. So that's our glossopharyngeal and there's probably two or three of them right there. And then we have the vagus back here. And you. This is mostly vasculature, but if there is a nerve hiding in there, that would be accessory back here. So glossopharyngeal vagus accessory, which I realize is 12. 11's over here, which we'll talk about in a minute. 11's actually pretty easy to find because it's the only one that comes off where it's supposed to. Um, I'll look on this guy here. So do you see how there's like a piece missing out of that? So glossopharyngeal would be here, but because that piece is missing, we don't have him, but this group here is the vagus nerves. Right there, are many strips. And then the other side, eh, we don't have anything, but that is where the glossopharyngeal was trying to be before he got tore off. And then let's look at our last brain here. So just showing, this one is not dissected, so it's actually pretty cool because you can see that natural split right there. So you have this one that is more anterior. 
And that is our glossopharyngeal. So trying to kind of isolate it, but it's still stuck to the fascia. So I don't want to break it, but just that first one right there. And then the group behind it that I am kind of picking up here, that's another one, but he's stuck. So I'm not going to pull him off. But this group back here is vagus. So we have glossopharyngeal vagus. And for your reference point, here was facial. And then vestibulocochlear is kind of hiding under here. So let's look at the other side. Oh, this side's great too. Ooh, awesome. Lots of great nerves. So here we have glossopharyngeal. And then there's our group of vagus back here. So you can see how it naturally comes apart and groups together. <coughs> So vagus has many, glossopharyngeal I've seen might have one, two, or three. I don't usually see a giant group like we do with vagus. And of course, accessory would be back here. So our hypoglossal nerve, if you see, here's our anterior median fissure on the spinal cord, which will be next week covered. But you can see how there's like a, a bump and then a groove or indentation. This groove or indentation is where we're going to find the nerves for hypoglossal. So we can see I'm kind of grabbing, that's a nerve right there in that groove. That would be hypoglossal. Whereas glossopharyngeal and a vagus are all the way to the side over here. Accessory would also be the side. So these are the only ones that come off in that groove right there. So on this side, we can see if I lift these up, these are all stemming from that groove right there. So these are also hypoglossal. So let's look at some of these other brains. And there should be lots of groups. These ones kind of get stuck in the skull, but here's a longer one here. So again, we're coming off in that groove. So this is a hypoglossal, and this is a hypoglossal. And then this guy has none, he's naked. <laughs> so he's missing, but that's where they would be is in that groove there and in that groove there. So when we're doing cranial nerves, it's really important to find where they're coming off in the brain. That can really be a clue indicator. We're gonna just look at the plastics real quick. Um, I was gonna go back and forth and I didn't. So on the plastics, just real quick, there's a couple different models I have here. So I just wanna show you the different images. So here's olfactory bulb and tract, optic nerve and tract. If you see hiding in there, that is our oculomotor. And then we can see trigeminal, which is just this tiny little round thing. And if you kind of look deep down in there, we have trochlear trying to come to the front. And then we'll have one, two, three in a row, just like we did on the real brain. We have abducens, facial, vestibulocochlear. This brain's actually kind of nice because look, it gives you the numbers of the cranial nerves on it. <laughs> so lucky for you. Um, on the side here, they've actually grouped hypoglossal. Well, I think there's a nub here. So you have hypoglossal in the front and then vagus behind it. And then I think I said, I'm not sure if I said this right, but this is glossopharyngeal and that's vagus. I might've said hypoglossal and I didn't mean to, but this is glossopharyngeal and vagus. And then on the front in that groove, here's our hypoglossal. And then at the back, we have accessory here. So let's look at this model, which looks totally different than the one we just looked at. Um, we have olfactory bulb and tract, optic nerve, chiasm tract, oculomotor nerve. Our trigeminal on this one is actually pretty substantial. I'm not seeing trochlear wrapping around, but oh, it's there. It's just, I have to disassemble this. Eh, might not be worth it for this video, sorry. <laughs> It's taking too long, but we'll just get rid of that lobe. Okay, now we can see it in its entirety here. So there's that trochlear, again, coming off inferior to that inferior colliculi and wrapping forward. So if it's long enough, it'll go all the way to the front, but if it's not, nothing we can do. And again, here's trigeminal. So trigeminal has its name because it will split into three different branches. Then we have the three in a row. So we go abducens, facial, vestibulocochlear. And then on the side here, so there, this is more indicative. So we have a little bit of glossopharyngeal and a lot of bit of vagus. So this looks a little more realistic and what we see on the real brains. So glossopharyngeal, vagus. Then we have hypoglossal. 
So on here, here we have glossopharyngeal vagus, hypoglossal, and then here is our accessory coming off. This side doesn't show accessory or it has vagus continuous with accessory, not quite sure there, but um, accessory kind of comes off the side in the back here. So, and vagus, I guess on this side, vagus really doesn't extend all the way back. So this is probably vagus continuing into accessory here on that side. So those are our cranial nerves.